two letters, one word, the meaning of life. Yeah, 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 happy Thursday, bitches. Previously on Kimba TV. So there is a chance that it's a 41-3 long, but if that 41-3 doesn't sweep, if it doesn't do a swing fail pattern, like something like this, it's gonna lose it and then tuck right back in. If it doesn't do some sort of bullish structure or if it doesn't do a failed auction, if those two things don't make sense, don't worry about it. Okay, but if it doesn't look bullish, the next place that I would think about longing would be around the 38.5. That would also have to be a sweep. And I think that's gonna be a big sweep. I think it could go to all the way to like 37,000 or something and then tuck back in. Maybe it's a failed auction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How we do? It's too easy when you're a lion. I mean, this, I think, do I really need to do that much TA? I feel like this speaks for itself, y'all. I feel like this speaks for itself. The math is the math. All right, the hourly just closed, y'all. The hourly just closed. Are we good? It's really not that hard, ladies and gentlemen. So the retest failed, right? What do you, what do you mean? What? What? Are we looking at the same? What's on my screen right now? No, we're looking at the same thing. All right, I'm going to go back to the 15-minute uh, candles here just so we can kind of follow along. Roger that. All righty, bloody. If you, if you do this, look, it's really not that hard to see it for yourself. And this is what we talk about all this other time. See all that? So go swing high, swing low. You see the single prints and the point of control lining up right at Kimba box. So it's always been 45, 47. All righty. But how, how long have we talked about that though, gang? I don't know. I feel like you've been here for it for most of the talk, bloody. So let me know if you have any specific questions, brother, because I'm pretty sure... You, cause I know you've been here, bloody. I know you're, you're. I know you've been grinding and shit. So you, you've probably heard me talk about it here and there, brother. I don't think you've completely just been missing out on it. But we, we've talked about it for quite some time. It's forty five, forty six for me to add. Um, I mean, what will be the reaction that you want to see on that? Well, it's always the same, bloody. So for me, I'm gonna be looking at open interest and CVD. And preferably, I get a hidden bear div on the higher time frame on the CVD. Alrighty, but there's single prints that overlap with volume point of controls that overlap also with TPOs and Fibonacci levels. So the levels are easy to pick out. All right, and then as we approach that level, I'll just be focusing on open interest and CVD. Absolute says, if we go up to 46 and the data is bullish, would you directly close it or would you put a stop loss to give a chance for some bearish retest? I would just be patient and wait. Yeah, so that usually, and I mean, it's not the first time that I'm dealing with something like that, Absolute. What I, what I have noticed is that if I'm patient, it's going to give me like a 15-minute bear div or something, or it's going to confirm a hidden bear div on the RSI, and that's when I can take it. Kind of like how the this one. Kind of like this. We knew that somewhere here we wanted to long, if you remember. We knew that we wanted to long somewhere around here. Okay? But this is a hidden bull div. This is also a hidden bull div. So this held it, okay? And then on the smaller time frame, this is a regular bull div. So you had a smaller time frame, regular bull div, bull div building into the hidden regular bull div. So when this came through, it was not bullish. So being patient and letting it do something like this and then trying to get back in here, that's the best way to go about it. Did you hear me talking about the failed auction here? Dink, dink, the level is set. Dink, dink, that's a failed auction. 
break above, back test, turn it into support, you fly. Shut out Kimba. Set the level. Get it. Kimba was popping. Dang, that's a failed auction. Go. So if if it's going up and the data doesn't look good, I would probably be um I would probably be patient with it. That's it. Uh sounds good. Absolute. So like based off of what I just drew right now. Level. Clearly, bulls need to hold this and then get back in. And how much you want to bet that that's like a mathematical level too? You're stupid. I don't want to mess you up because it does take some preparation, okay? But this is the daily... This is the daily ETH BTC. We just got that sweep. I don't know. It's a lot easier if you've been able to follow along. We were waiting for a sweep. We got the sweep. I waited for the penetration. We got the penetration. I'm waiting for the bullish retest. We're getting it right now. I'm, I would think it's still maybe two, three days out minimum, maybe two weeks out max. So I'm trying to be patient. But once I feel like ETH BTC is finally breaking out of this two-year downtrend with a bullish retest, I'm going to start thinking about longing ETH. Okay. But I want you to understand why I would start to long ETH finally after all this time. Uh, is a close above a bearish divergence good confluence for a bullish trend? Uh, yes and no. First off, obviously, it depends on what kind of time frame close. If you're talking about a one-minute candle close, probably not good enough. The other thing too, Chris, this is all about pattern recognition. So you should be able to look at the other times when a bearish divergence was invalidated, and you should cycle through the time periods and see how long it took time-wise, to really stay above or stay below a bullish or bearish divergence line. Sounds good? Makes sense, right, Chris? Mex83 says, thanks, Kimba, for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for your time. Mex83, I saw you gift those subs, brother. Any questions? You want to talk about anything? Thank you, brother. Desk Slap says, where would you put a stop loss on a short on that retest of the trend line? Rejection of range POC plus 0 0.5. I have a higher high. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Some people, Desk Slap, will understand that doing a higher high is super obvious and you might get hunted. So some people might mark it close after they see certain amount of time above or below the resistance. All right, um, some advanced people desk slap, they'll just mark it, close it once uh, there's a 15-minute candle above the trend line, you know, because you don't want to be the guy that gets stopped out when it does something like this, the dink, and then it makes a bear div. And then you're thinking to yourself, oh, my God, I can't believe I just got stopped out. Well, you did the most basic-ass thing, you know. So, yeah, that would be good, but you have to understand that there's probably, you know, Sato's probably doing the same thing. Bato's probably doing the same thing, right? So you you got to be, like, aware of all the things. You, you, you can see that there's a potential for, like, a bear div, right? This is pretty low. This could make a higher high, and if this, that's a bear div. So that's all, that's all the stuff that you have to kind of juggle. If you really wanted to nerd out desk slap, you go take a look at the CVD on Bybit and Binance, and you see how much money is actually in that edge. Okay? So you can do something like, okay. Oh, they used to let you double-click this. So you see this is at negative 17, and then this is at negative 13. Let's just say that this was a div, okay? You would be like, that's $4 million worth of a bullish divergence. I don't think that's enough. Do you know how you tell if it's enough? 
you go back and you compare all the other hidden bulls or hidden uh, bear divs or bull, whatever, and you see how much money on average it took. But you can actually see, okay, this div is really only worth $4 million. That's not good enough. Sometimes you're going to be like, oh, shit, the $4 million worth is actually the shorts that are trapped that haven't closed yet. Then you might be like, that's good, good enough. I might take it. You got to use all the data. And, you, and the biggest thing is, is you got to remember what, what it did in the past. Bugatti, 45 minutes. Let's get nasty. Any questions? Any questions? Any fib enjoyers? Mandalo says naked point of control grabbed. Beautiful. Did it? Did it? And, and uh, remember this. Remember what we talked about? The bear div. You can't see the thing thing because it's overlapping on the thing, but... Everybody sees it, right? Everybody sees it. Let's get nasty, y'all. The math is the math. When was the other time when like it didn't tap it, but it, it went and grabbed it? Was it here? Yeah, 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 right? Everybody juicing. Everybody juicing. Get nasty. There's a couple things that are like super juicer things that you can take away from all this. Um, so like, let's just uh, remove the fib for a second. If you were, if you saw this and you were thinking about shorting and you were trying to identify levels, you would have gone swing high, swing low. And you would have seen the TPO, naked point of control, untapped right there since yesterday. Really, I mean, it's been there since yesterday, right? Um, so you would have seen the TPO level there. You would have seen this, like this. Um, and so just from a mathematical level, you would have gone Kimba Box. And mathematical volume is a little bit lower. Here you go. Your volume is a little bit low right here. And then your ultimate peak is right here. So the top of the box is good. The top of the box is good. I think, you know, from a statistical standpoint, you have a good shot of getting filled fully because of that volume peak is right above. So that's good. Your TPO is there. Your 618 is there. And your cluster starts there. So this box is good, right? And so you would have identified the level and then you would have tried to be patient for some sort of edge. Um, and um, when, when we were talking, whoever that was, when we were talking about um, the uh, stop loss, remember when we were talking about that would, it would be really easy to do that? And a bunch of retail would do that. Um, and your point of control didn't get tapped. That's right. A and you got your bear div. So now you have an edge. Here, one, it's not a level that you identified. Two, it's before the point of control. Um, and three, you, you have no edge. But now you have an edge. Now you're inside levels that you've anticipated. You know? So, and really, the question is, is um, why would you have gotten into a short there? So, anyways. Oh, it was you, Desk Slap? So, so Desk Slap, even if you got stopped out, boy, did you juice the fuck up. <clears throat> because... I don't give a shit how much you lost or uh, uh, maybe you got stopped out at break even. That part I don't really care about, Desk Slap. What I care about is you got to see a naked point of control get tapped, okay, again. Because this is I don't think this is the first time that you and I have seen a naked point of control get front ran, but then eventually get thangity thang thanged. 
right? So, and I think you also are starting to understand why I would personally get left at the train station, which means that I didn't get to make any money instead of getting in too early or FOMOing in for no reason and then taking a small L because that's obviously a net negative strategy. You keep doing that, you're going to lose all your money. <clears throat> it was yesterday, the same with the opponent control. There you go, Jack. So I don't really have to tell you guys how these levels get tapped, right? Because you guys are seeing it for yourself. The thing is, is can you remember it next time? Can you remember it when it means the most, when the emotions are flying and the bullets are flying, right? So this is kind of a great example of identify the levels, go into it knowing that you're going to wait for an edge, and maybe be okay with getting left at this train station if you, you know, if that's the thingity thing thing. Um, Desk Slap says, uh, this was my reasoning. Rejection of the range point of control. Um, it depends on what your range is. Um, so, so here, let's do this on the CME. Let's see. So it's going to be from this candle all the way through. Mm, it's hard because it's not really range. Of, for me, the range of control would be like 43,000 on CME. It's still, it's still in this thangity thang thang. It's still in retail arena. For me, this would be the range. But there is no right or wrong. And then you said Fib 05618. Got you, got you. But um, what you're going to probably start to understand is there. this is really only is an occurrence when it's extremely bearish. And that's certainly Kimba Box when we're in a bull market. Um, but you got to think historically, like, does it, does it really, you know, do that or is it more that? How many times do you see this and how many times do you see that? So something to keep in mind. Um, and it's all about probabilities. Um, but did you get fulfilled then or did you get stopped out? But now you actually have an edge. Now you're approaching levels. I still think it could, it could even go up to this little volume node, but we'll see. Ideally, I mean, you're actually seeing another thangity thang thang right now. Ideally, you can kind of see it better on the 15. You set the level. So what if you're a bear, what would you like to see? I feel like we've seen hella failed auctions. To the upside, to the downside. Yeah. Anyways, let's see. It's, it's like we can't predict the future, and that's not what anybody's asking you to do. But can you identify levels so you can understand where the fights are, where the important levels are? Can you remember what happened before so you know that those levels are actually in play? That's really all it is. And then from there, depending on how you want to be aggressive, you can start placing bets. But let's get nasty with it, yo! Let's go! And I feel like if you can see how the game is playing out, it's much more enjoyable. Anyways, everybody Gucci, shout outs to longers. I see you. Shout outs to shorters. Let's get nasty. The math is the math either way, whether you like it or not. But um, I feel like today, like this is super juice, you know. Um, even if you got stopped out on the short, who gives a shit? Now you got to see why it might be better to wait for the naked point of control, why the fibs are the fibs, you know, why you might want to wait for an edge, you know, all that shit, regardless of how it work, plays out. So no matter what, like it's juice, right? For everybody. Um, 
Sizzazard says, what edge are you talking about? Make sure you rewind and get caught up. But for example, the bear div on the smaller time frame, albeit, but it's better than nothing, right? Um, Swap base has TP'd 50% of the long from MPOC. Let's go! MPOC to MPOC is kind of nice, nice, actually. Low key. Um, JV says, good day. I just took short at 43.1. Nice. Um, hopefully you heard everything that I was talking about. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it goes to the seven, five, seven, eight, six. And just remember that in two hours and 30 minutes, traditional markets closed. All righty. Something that you might want to ask yourself, for example, is that top up there. Is that a poor high? Is that a weak high or is that Gucci? Hmm. Um, could get swept during Macaulay, man. I don't zizanoza. Always long says weak high. Yeah. So it's all Gucci. It's all Gucci. I'm not saying that it needs to get grabbed because look, these are this is all ass as well. Ass, 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 like Big Sean's song. Okay. This is the theme song for when we're talking about um poor lows, okay? S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S S Go stupid, go sato, go sato. So would it surprise us lions if it does some goofy shit like that? Nope. What if this goes down, buys itself more room, so on this leg up, this still maintains a triple bear div? That would be goofy Gucci. Right? You, you know what happens when it's goofy and Gucci? Gufucci. So my plan is that I'm going to um, add uh, if it goes to 45, 46. But for me... All I, the worst thing that happens to me is I lose out on unrealized profits. I can't lose on this trade. Okay? So me being able to add, and even if the adding doesn't work out, still walk away with 150K, that's how my trade is going to end out. You know, if you get stopped out at 47, 48, you're going to be okay with that. But the biggest thing is, Merino, when you entered that short, what was your stop loss? You would have already had your stop loss set, right? So stick to your plan. Stick to your original plan. It, here's the thing, Merino. If you, you know, start to, if your process is, uh, I'm going to listen to other people, it's really hard for you to improve, Okay. But if somebody is saying, based off of this, this, and this, I'm going to enter. And based off of this, this, and this, I'm going to get out. Whether you're right or wrong, or if it works out or not, the person that does that protocol will improve much faster than somebody that starts to Frankenstein their TA. You're taking a little bit of this person's TA, a little bit of this person's opinion, a little bit of this person, and you're going to have your own Frankenstein little fucked up ugly TA. Because at the end of the day, if you really want to be successful, you're not, you have to know what you're doing yourself. You're going to have to be confident in what you're seeing yourself, right? You don't want to be the guy that's been trading for three, four, five years, and you still don't have any uh, confidence. You know, it's because you fucked up your whole learning opportunities. So um, what I would recommend that you do Mirino is stick to your plan when you shorted at 41.7 what was your invalidation it certainly couldn't have been 45.46 all righty so based off of what what and what did you enter so therefore you should have a counter thought of based off of this this and this i'm gonna get out all righty but don't be afraid of taking a little bit of an l because that's the right thing to do. Don't be like a little, for lack of a better word, like a pussyfooting bitch and be scared of taking an L and end up taking a huge L because you're just hoping that it's going to turn around. That's not how you trade. That's not trading one bit. All righty.
So um, I would just say whatever your original stop loss was, I would, you know, let it hit. Okay. I feel like if you have any questions, let me know. But I feel like we've talked about what it would look like on this, what you would want it to look like, what that is. Okay. On the one hour time frame, if you are going to consider this to be a sweep, then you could, you kind of know what you, you know, what would invalidate the sweep. There you go. Shwiggity shwaggity. Literally as we drew it. Math. Latouche, motherfucker, the math is the math. So if, for example, okay, what, what do I mean by math, okay? If that hourly sweep structure is going to hold, you're not going to spend any more than 10, 15 minutes max above the golden pocket. So you're going to see right now if that swing structure on the one hour is truly valid or not. And so you take it level by level. So if that one hour sweep failure is invalidated, then you have to look for your next edge. So let me know if you have any specific questions. But right now, for example, we'll see in the next 15 minutes if that one hour swing fail structure is valid or not. Because if for some reason this is like a five minute candle like this, but on the next one we're down here, then you're fine. There's nothing to worry about. But if you start to do this, uh oh, because then you know that it's going to high probability that's going to make a higher high. Shwiggity, 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 shwiggity. Shwiggity, 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 shwiggity. And then this is the smaller one, right? This is the big one that you're asking about. Let's go back to the 15 minute so you guys can watch it. Do you remember when we were talking about and people are going to be like, oh shit, it's breaking. Well, this 15 minute candle closes in 13 more minutes. How goofy would it be if this ends up like that? You never know. Oh geez, remember when we used to see the conversion, the conversion all the time, the triple? We haven't seen that in quite a bit, to be honest. Too many single prints and imbalances kind of, uh, you know, affecting that math play out. SMP getting nasty, yo! Uh, Revs QQ says, ETH BTC doing its thing. Oh, we getting nasty! Oh, we getting nasty! Oh, we getting nasty! Let's get nasty! Let's go, let's go. Ooh, ETH BTC. Remember what we talked about. Remember what we talked about. Remember what we talked about. Being patient. Bugachi. I see you, Revs QQ. It's almost time, right? You like you the patience is paying off though. It's not as like wide as we wanted, but bounce, 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 right? Shwiggity, 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 y'all. Getting nasty, y'all. Let's go. Math is the math, y'all. The math is the math. RK Master, stop playing with me. Let's go. Let's go. Juice. Uh, they grabbed the shit of things. It grabbed that thangity thing, y'all. It grabbed that thangity thing. Is it going to be a sweep of the thangity thing, y'all? Is it going to try to sweep the thangity thing, y'all? Get nasty. The math is the math. And it got the poor high, y'all. And it grabbed the poor high, Bugatti. Shwiggity, shwiggity. Get nasty. Get nasty. Join the shit. Happy Thursday, y'all. 10 more minutes on the hourly candle close. Boy, we got about an hour and 10 minutes left on traditional market close, y'all. Don't get nasty during Macaulay Culkin, y'all. Beave Beave says you make me hype. Let's go. How can you not get hype? You got to love this shit, Beave Beave. Ricky, let's go. Shredded, let's go. Time Raccoon, TS, Oxydent, let's go. 19 Turbo, let's go. Z Dubs, let's go. The math is the math, ladies and gentlemen. Quit playing with me. Everybody Gucci. 
40 minutes on market close, y'all. What a day. Um, hey, hands up if you were here um, at the beginning of the uh, stream, towards the beginning, when we were talking about this, why I would anticipate maybe for it to go up there. You remember when we were talking about that volume node? So if you went one, two, three, four, your average entry would be right there. Well, maybe you didn't get filled on the 786. You know, maybe you didn't get filled on the 786, but even if you didn't, like your entry would probably be right there. So let's see. If you are in a short um, and you're seeing this bounce, you probably want it to fail on you. So, maybe there's one more, but um, at, at some point, like, it's got to start to uh, confirm, not this, 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 this. If this really is a three drives, you would want it to just nuke. No, no bearish retest. Nah, nah, just, all righty. So at the end of the day, brother, no one knows. All right, JV, and you just got to do your best, okay? People were asking me, hey, man, you made a higher high. Are you going to move your stop loss? It was probably Alpeasy, okay? So it made a higher high. I moved up my stop loss to break even. I got stopped out, and I... <laughs> I had a long from here. I missed out on this. Sad face. But that's okay. You live and you learn. So I want to remind you what happened there too. All righty? Yeah, but did you hear my little spiel about you need to change structure? That's bullish structure. What would be bearish structure? Make a lower low, and then when it bounces... It makes a lower low. And do you remember when I pulled this fib? See that? That is the first time you become bearish. Because if it does this on your goofy ass, well, you're fucked. And to be honest with you, I don't know if you heard this other part, but on a three drives, you don't do a bearish retest. You go. I want this to kind of nuke, actually. I don't, I don't want a bearish retest there. I don't want a bearish retest there. Nah, fuck it. That's just me and based off of what I've seen in the past. All righty, so let's see it together. And at the end of the day, it's all about, can you remember what you saw for the next time? That's all it is, okay? There's really no right or wrong. I'm, there's, this is a valid long down here. Although I told Sato, hey man, those are poor lows, you know? But if you're in a long, that's a one hour bull div, right? Rooting for you. Let's go. It, it, it would, you're just gonna have to read the data as it happens. And so it's kind of hard for me to um, say like try to forecast what could happen here, but yeah, it would, that could be a um, good short, but I wouldn't add because just like how I was waiting for this, I already did that for this. You know, I already did that. So I'm going to wait and be patient and you know, you know what it is. I, I feel like there's, it's been two, three days in a row where we've had failed auction, where we've had naked point of controls eventually get tapped, where sing, waiting for the single prints to fully get topped. Like, remember some of this shit where some of it gets filled and then it comes back later, right? Right? Some of it gets filled and then it comes back later, right? Naked point of control, uh, but eventually it goes, right? The math usually plays out, right? So I'm going to be patient and wait, Alpeasy. 
you know. But um, but a 44K sweep would uh, be interesting, and, I, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit, especially because of this. 43.7 liquidity. All righty. And for the next couple of hours, you know, you can just watch this. You know, this is pretty nice too because look at this. This is pure math. Dink, dink, dink. It's trying to turn this into support. You see it, I see it, right? The question will, and, and here's what I would ask you, LPZ, if you um, are thinking, okay, is there even a possibility for Macaulay to dump? How much of this move up do, would you say was short squeeze and uh, S&P pumping? And there's no right or wrong answer, but that's probably how you would walk into Macaulay Culkin hour. Is there going to be some sort of like recorrecting? Um, I was just curious. Got you. Yeah, nope. I would, I'm still going to probably just wait for the 45, 46 to add. Check Amazon. Well, I'm assuming that some of these earnings are good. Yes. And uh, you know the whole thing about the, the daily open outside of the value area range. If it creeps, creeps back into it, you might have a full rotation play. You, you see how it says D open? That's the daily open, okay? You see how it says previous day value area low? And you see how it says previous day value area high? So if, you're, if you open, if your daily open is below the previous day value area low and your previous day value area high is up here, once you get in and you turn that into support, you have a high probability of rotating all the way to the other side. Obviously, you're going to have the previous day point of control and EQ as resistance, all right? But there's a high chance that you're going to rotate to the other side. Same thing uh, the other way around. If you open outside and above the value area high, then if you turn it into resistance, you have a high chance of previous day value area low. It's just a historical pattern that we've seen. So if it stays like that, it closes outside. Well, you have to, the, the, the new levels are going to show up on EXO. So this is, this is not a play because the daily open, today's open, okay, was inside the value area low and value area high. So you don't have a play. You need the daily open to be below the value area low or out uh, above the value area high. Okay, but this is almost invalid because the daily candle close is in two hours. So in two hours, you're going to have new pre, uh, daily open and the, and the previous day value area low, value area high. So today's value area low, value area high. All right, so in two hours, you're going to get completely different stuff. You're just going to have to watch EXO. But um, we're not, you know, here to predict the future. So make sure that you have levels identified to the upside and then to the downside. And then have a plan and then, you know, watch open interest. Try to do your best on what CVD is doing. Try to see are people getting stopped out or are they opening positions? Uh, Fibception says, thank you for today, man, man, Fibception. It's my pleasure as always. You know why, you know how I feel about you, Fibception. Any questions before I dip? I'm going to start the Vitus in like a minute. Um, quiet seven. What's going on? Marcenic, what's going on? What time frame do you think it's okay for confirmation of a sweep fail pattern? I usually like 30 minute, but have you been following along yesterday and today? You could make a very logical argument that the one hour time frame is a lot better to wait for. So were you here when we were looking at this? And we were like, oh man, that's kind of ugly. But then you switch to a one hour and it's clean. 
And what do we always say? We don't get bearish on the penetration. We look, we get bearish on the retest. You didn't get a retest. This retest is only valid if it breaks the local low. We don't get bullish on the breakout or the penetration. We get bullish on the retest. So we'll see if it can do that. Um, we kind of already talked about that. You know what I mean, right? We The, the Fibonacci, like all that stuff kind of lines up pretty, eh, you know what I mean? You know? Lots of lots of thang things. The math is the math, y'all. We talked about the three drives. You guys know what kind of thing I would want to see. I don't even want to see a bearish retest. A true three drives doesn't have a bearish retest, so... To be honest, nothing really changed. We we lost um, the line from yesterday, um, a fake breakout, bullish div back inside, and it's just fibbing right now. So a lot of the stuff that we were talking about yesterday is still on game, and the levels to the upside and downside haven't changed because we were here yesterday anyways. So, all righty. All right, let's do it. Let's make it official for the market makers. Well, you know what it is, y'all. Longers, I'm rooting for you. Shorters, I'm rooting for you. All right? Bulls, bears, we're all lions, y'all. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Weekly options, expirations. Let's get nasty. All right, I got to get out of here. The traffic is nasty, nasty. Love you. Stay safe. Have a great night. Peace, everybody.